<laughs> Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, I'm going to go in and create models within DBT. This demo is a continuation on a series of videos we've done around installing DBT. And today we're going to continue with creating models and orienting ourselves around the utility of DBT and why DBT is such an exciting capability within the data engineering space. That said, let's jump into a typical workflow data engineering teams might look at. You might be looking at loading some data, in this case, some customer data coming in, the orders for the data coming in. We might be looking at calculating customer orders to feed our BI reporting downstream. With the approach of ELT, uh, there would be some uh, data integration process loading data into, call this a staging area. Now, from a data engineering perspective, we want to go in and write the code that takes our customers, bounce it against the orders to figure out what our customers are buying. There are many ways to accomplish this. One would be leveraging pure SQL. You can write SQL. Folks have been doing this for a very long time. And your SQL code will reference your customer data and your orders data and does some, some aggregations. And the output goes into the customer's dot order for reporting. If the business comes up with new requirements, you can always go in and change, open up the SQL file and modify the code. DBT fits into this space. Just by this visualization, it should be very apparent to us that DBT is not an ETL tool. DBT will not help you with getting data from the sources. That's not what it does. What DBT helps you with is the transformations that happens within your data warehouse. It assumes that data is coming from source systems by some ETL tool, Airbyte or even Airflow or Matillion, Informatica, you name it, that data is being landed into your raw table or your source tables within your data warehouse. What DBT does is it sits there within your data warehouse to do the transformations, joins and the aggregations that combines your source data to produce consumer data products that can be used by data teams or bio reporting team. Just from an orientation perspective, that's where DBT fits. Let's go in into Snowflake to see how uh, I approach this with two different ways. Using SQL directly within the Snowflake UI, and then we're also going to switch back to say, if we were going to do this in DBT, what would that look like? So let's look at the approach for doing it with SQL. The example I have here is going to leverage the sample data that comes with the Snowflake instance. You can see that data set available here. It does have some customers. If I preview this data, you can see customers information. It also has orders. And if I preview this, you can see what the customers are ordering and the total pricing for that. Open up a worksheet within uh, Snowflake. Here we're just writing pure vanilla SQL, getting our customers getting our orders and we're just doing a joiner around the customers and the orders to get the result and visualize that on the screen. So let me go ahead and run this. We now see the customers and the total orders by each customer. Now we can do this in SQL. Assume the business comes back with a new requirement to update this, add a new column, change the calculation. What we have to do is come back in here and make the change to this code and it should be all fine and good. All right. Where does DBT fit into this? Let's jump in into our DBT environment and see how we can accomplish something similar leveraging DBT. With DBT, we work usually within the models. Everything we do would be created within the models files. There are other folders which we're not going to touch on in this demo. We're going to touch on those in separate demos. Let's uh, delete the previous sample models we had coming from our installation. Now we have a blank model folder to work with. Create a new file, give it a name here, customers. The reason why I start that with underscore is because you cannot start this with numbers, of course. Now we have a new file. It's a SQL file sitting within models uh, folder. With DBT, we can go in and write similar code like we did on the SQL side. 
So here we can have the same looking code that we had on the SQL side with not a lot of differences. There's one more configuration we have to introduce. This configuration tells dbt how to materialize this result. So when it runs on the Snowflake side, how should that get materialized? With our configurations in place, before we execute our dbt model we just created, let's go over to the Snowflake side to validate what we have. There is a demo db database and within that there is a public schema. Within the public schema, there is a table and there are views. But if we refresh that, those are currently blank. On the source side, we know there is uh, the sample data that's coming from the TPCDH data set that does have customers and has orders. Our goal is to pull from our customers and our orders and create views within this demo DB that could be used by the analytics teams or our data products teams. So let's go back over into Visual Studio Code and we're going to execute our model. As long as the model sits within the models folder, we can simply do dbt run a full refresh. We found one model and that model is getting executed. So the model file we're executing is the customer's the SQL model, which we can see here on the screen. If we go back over to Snowflake, because all of this is happening on the Snowflake side, do a refresh of this. We now see a view in here created that has our model. We can preview the data of this view. So dbt can execute SQL on Snowflake. Now, the question is, if we can execute SQL in Snowflake by writing SQL, and we can execute SQL in Snowflake by putting that in dbt, why put it in dbt? Let's double click on that. Before we had one file with all of our code that looks at our customers, orders, and our customers by order table. Let's delete that file. Now, what I have created is two separate files. One for our customers, one for the orders, in the file name stage.orders and in the file name stage.customers, and a third file, which is called the customer orders. So bringing modularity into this. Let's double click on the customers.order file. Within this file, we can see we're getting our customers, but how are we getting the customers? We're using a new concept within TBT, which is reference. This syntax, if you're not familiar with this, is ginger. So it allows for modularity and uh, referenceability within your code. Here, customers is referencing our stage customer file. Whatever the output for this gets passed into this. And we're putting that into customers. We're doing the same for, for orders. When we're done, we can now do our aggregation. So let's go ahead and run this code as we did before, dbt run. Now we have three models that have executed. Those were all successful. If we switch back over to the Snowflake site and refresh our views, we have a view here for customers, orders, and we have our final view for customer orders. If we preview our customers, we see only the customer results. If we preview our orders, we see all of the other results. If we want to look at what the customers were buying or ordering, we see that result. There is the argument to be made that by breaking things up and injecting modularity into the code, we can change the requirements on how we calculate orders or how customers are calculated without affecting the end result of our customer orders. In short, dbt allows us to do the T in ELT. There is the extract, there is the loading, and dbt comes in to help with that transform. So what and we've so seen today is dbt leveraging the SQL syntax along with Ginger to help with the T transformation within ELT. We're doing this in code. There is a cloud-based version of dbt where you can get to do all of this using a drag and drop UI for folks who prefer that experience. But hopefully this gives you a foundational understanding of 
why teams are looking at DBT, how it could fit within their workflow. Uh, teams already write SQL today. DBT introduces more concepts for modularity. This is not something new. In the software engineering space, there was the idea of MVC, model view controls, and object-oriented programming. DBT uh, serves to facilitate some of those concepts to a certain extent within the data engineering space with good data engineering principles added into that. So hopefully this gives you an idea of models. DBT is really driven by models. In subsequent videos, we're going to touch on more concepts like injecting tests within your DBT, doing more validation, snapshots, and other things that could be done within DBT. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Fro with DemoHub. I'll see you in the next demo. Thank <laughs> you.